Good morning, dear colleagues, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to the 2022 ETSC Road Safety Performance Conference. Um, today, we will uh, launch the 16th PIN annual report. We will uh, present its findings during this conference, but also we will have uh, the opportunity to present an award to uh, the country that has uh, uh, been awarded for uh, the PIN in 2022. Uh, we will have uh, the minister and we will have the deputy minister. So we have honored to um, have high level participation from uh, uh, the country concerned. Uh, we are also delighted to um, welcome Claire Depre, who is the head of the road safety unit at the uh, European Commission. And um, after a coffee break, then we will move into the panel discussion with a great chair and uh, a, a fantastic lineup of uh, um, speakers. But before going into the details of uh, uh, this year's annual report, I would like to give you a, a short uh, flavor of uh, the um, ETSC um, PIN program. You know, uh, this is uh, uh, the oldest uh, ETSC um, project uh, which has been uh, uh, running since uh, 2006. The aim is uh, to compare member states on uh, uh, the basis of uh, the um, road safety performance. And uh, um, I shouldn't say member states, I should say countries, because uh, actually the PIN program goes above and beyond the 27 member states of the um, European Union. Um, we need to uh, also recognize that without our committed partners, the project would not be um, able to run. and. Uh, um, I've listed them here, DVR, the German Road Safety Council, Toyota Motor Europe, the Norwegian Public Roads Administration, and CETA, that is, that is the International Motor Vehicle Inspection Committee. So thank you to our partners. Some words also about the uh, infrastructure of the program, the, uh, uh, um, the, the, the various uh, roles within uh, the program, and uh, um, uh, the PIN panelists, first and foremost. We have uh, 32 countries uh, um, which are part of the PIN project, the 27 of the um, European Union uh, plus UK, Norway, Switzerland, Serbia, and Israel. And we have experts from uh, each of the participating countries that are providing us with data, with advice, with information. Uh, and uh, I'd really love to thank once again uh, the panelists because uh, obviously without them, it would not be possible to um, run our comparisons, to publish our reports, to, uh, in a few words, run the PIN uh, program. Uh, the steering group, extremely important, of course, it's what leads the uh, project. Uh, and uh, uh, this is for me the opportunity to thank for the continuous work and commitment, uh, the two co-chairs, um, Heather Ward and Eng Stipdonk, and uh, uh, the program advisor, Professor Richard also, who's been with us uh, since the very first days of uh, the uh, PIN program. And uh, within the steering group, we also have the European Commission leading independent experts from uh, uh, various universities and uh, research centers in uh, the European Union, uh, and uh, of course, the uh, program partners. Uh, the project team in uh, uh, Brussels, uh, um, Jenny Carson and Maria Meinero, and uh, uh, the, they are behind uh, the everyday activity of the project. Uh, and. Uh, um, even though EPSC has been one of the most important EPSC projects, the whole of the Secretariat contributes to uh, the PIN work. And over the years, we have uh, published not less than uh, 42 reports, and uh, we have had events and meetings uh, in all the participating countries of uh, uh, the project. But now, Let's move on to uh, this year's report, the 2022 report, the uh, PIN report number 16. And uh, uh, we start with uh, the data. Um, 19,823 people died in uh, road traffic collisions in the EU in 2021. Um, the good news is that uh, uh, these are 9,000 less than uh, uh, in 2011. However, uh, the uh, bad news remains, and uh, already in uh, 
cold economic terms, this is uh, a very high cost to society. But beyond the cold economic terms, if we look at the human part of it, at the human terms of the matter, well, this is uh, a stain on society that uh, we still accept that more than 50 people every day die on road collisions in the European Union when uh, effective um, countermeasures are known and should be uh, implemented. In the report, uh, we look at uh, uh, the progress in uh, um, improving road safety and uh, uh, this graph also the change in exposure in kilometers driven between uh, 2019, uh, 2021. Uh, maybe I don't need to explain why the comparison is between 2019 and 2021, and we do ignore uh, 2020, which has been the strangest of all years, of course, with uh, uh, travel restrictions, lockdowns. Uh, basically, uh, the figures would not uh, tell us much in terms of uh, um, comparison between 2020 and 2021. Uh, if uh, uh, we um, compare, this year's figures, uh, well, 21, 2021 figures with the one uh, before the uh, pandemic in uh, 2019, uh, we'll see that the EU27 um, average reduction has been 13%. Uh, this is uh, certainly um, a good result, of course, but uh, it still remains impacted by the travel restrictions, by the working from home, basically by a reduced exposure. And the reduced exposure can also be seen by the fact that for all the countries in the graph that were able to uh, provide us with uh, kilometers driven, well, for all of them, there has been uh, a reduction in uh, the numbers of kilometers driven between uh, uh, 2019 and uh, 2021. But let's now have a look at uh, a longer time span uh, between uh, 2011 and uh, 2021. Um, the graph shows that uh, after a very encouraging start between uh, 2011 and 2014 with a 16% uh, reduction, we had five bad years of uh, stagnation in which uh, uh, the average reduction was only uh, 7%. Uh, this was uh, followed by uh, an exceptional drop between uh, 2019 uh, and 2020, of course, for uh, uh, the wrong reasons, certainly not uh, only and not necessarily because of improved road safety, but because of the uh, travel uh, restrictions linked to uh, the pandemic. And now uh, between uh, 2020 20 and 2021, um, we have had a small increase of 5%, uh, which is uh, um, certainly also due to uh, the um, gradual relaxation of uh, uh, travel uh, restriction. For the European Union uh, as a whole, it's a 31% reduction between 2011 and uh, uh, 2021 and uh, 57,000 fewer deaths uh, than uh, if uh, road safety levels had been uh, in 2021 as they were in 2011. Um, we also have uh, a breakdown per uh, pin countries of uh, uh, the progress between uh, 2011 and 2021. Um, the good news is that in uh, uh, the last decade, uh, all the PIN countries have uh, been reducing their numbers of road deaths, some uh, with uh, great results like Norway, a PIN uh, um, country, a, non, a PIN country, but a non-EU country uh, with 52% reduction, and uh, um, Lithuania, the only uh, EU country to have uh, done more than a 50% reduction. On the other hand, uh, progress has been uh, slowest in uh, uh, Israel with uh, uh, five percent, and uh, uh, more notably in uh, uh, Romania with minus twelve uh, uh, percent. Road mortality 
number of deaths per uh, million population. Um, I've got two graphs about that, two um, slides about that. This is uh, the graph that shows that uh, uh, mortality in uh, pink countries differs still a lot between uh, the best performing countries and the less well performing countries. And actually the uh, best country differs by a factor of six compared to the um, worst um, performing country in uh, the in European Union. We can see also this in uh, uh, um, this breakdown by uh, PIN countries. And uh, uh, for the EU27, um, the uh, level of road mortality is now 45, an important reduction um, since 2011 when uh, uh, this uh, um, figure was uh, uh, 66. But again, uh, the uh, um, COVID, the travel restrictions have played a role here. And uh, um, when looking at countries, important to notice that uh, uh, Norway remains uh, uh, the leader in uh, the PIN group with uh, uh, 15 deaths per uh, uh, million population, uh, whereas uh, uh, the highest road mortality is found in uh, uh, Bulgaria with uh, um, 81 and uh, um, Romania with uh, uh, 93. So far, I have uh, uh, just spoken about numbers of deaths. This is uh, an estimate of, uh, uh, by the European Commission of uh, uh, those uh, um, seriously injured according to uh, the new um, definition uh, in uh, uh, 2019, 120,000. These are the figures. Um, we now have uh, um, some recommendations for uh, the national level and for uh, the EU level. This can also be found in the report with some more details. Uh, when it comes to uh, the national level, of course, we will never insist enough on the importance of adopting and uh, implementing the safe system approach to road safety. Funding, uh, it's very difficult, uh, you all know, doing uh, road safety, effective road safety without uh, sufficient funding. Um, cho choosing the road safety measures based on sound evaluation, on research, on science. And for uh, um, countries that uh, have, not, have not done so yet, to set targets to reduce by half the number of road deaths and uh, serious injuries in the uh, decade uh, to come. Um, there are also some uh, recommendations for um, EU policy developments. We'll be uh, um, honored to have uh, um, the head of the road safety unit uh, speaking uh, um, later um, in the morning. Um, we insist on the importance of uh, fast tracking uh, um, KPI data collection and targets. Uh, it is important to start early in the decade in the implementation of the EU road safety strategy. So we are really looking forward to uh, the revisions of the driving license directive and uh, the um, cross border enforcement. Uh, and uh, uh, we uh, believe it's extremely important to have a recommendation on speed limits for all roads. We know that uh, in the current circumstances, this would be a win-win-win. It would be great for safety, it would be great to reduce our uh, dependence on energy, and uh, it would be, of course, very good also for uh, the environment. Uh, and uh, last but uh, not least, we believe it's high time to have uh, at EU level uh, a fully fledged road safety um, agency. Now, uh, this is it for uh, the recommendations. It is uh, uh, now time to talk about the PIN award. You know that every year we award one uh, PIN country for uh, uh, their um, important performance in road safety, for their improvements in road safety. So it's now time to discover the winner.
So congratulations to um, Lithuania for their achievements. It's not the first time they uh, win the PIN award. It had happened already in uh, uh, 2011. This shows that they have not shown complacency. They've been able to continue working and now deserve winning the um, PIN award again. Uh, the only country in uh, uh, the EU to have uh, managed a 50% reduction in the number of road deaths between 2011 and uh, 2021, uh, as opposed to the EU average of uh, a reduction of 31%. Of course, as I said, there is no room for complacency because if you look at road mortality, the number is still above the EU average. The EU has 45 and uh, um, Lithuania has got uh, uh, 53. So uh, still time to work and to improve. Uh, well, why um, Lithuania? We will hear, of course, more from uh, the minister and uh, the uh, deputy minister, but uh, um, the reasons that have led uh, the uh, PIN steering committee to award the PIN to Lithuania is first and foremost because they've managed to halve uh, the number of road deaths in uh, the last decade because uh, uh, the, uh, um, the, the country has got uh, a long-term national road safety program with uh, uh, the targets of uh, reducing deaths by 50% uh, uh, by 2030 and also with the vision uh, to uh, um, reach Vision Zero by uh, 2050. So um, clearly vision, targets and uh, strategies. Uh, um, in that investigation of uh, all fatal vehicle crashes uh, um, since 2019, and uh, this is extremely important, of course, uh, uh, investigations done not with the aim of uh, apportioning blame or liability, but uh, with the aim of learning more from what happened in order to um, prevent uh, um, future um, collisions. Uh, um, Lithuania is also uh, developing a new traffic collision information system and uh, uh, last but not least they have a nationwide program since uh, they have had a nationwide program since 2018 to um, audit pedestrian crossings and uh, uh, improve the level of uh, uh, safety. But I will say no more, and uh, I am uh, delighted to um, invite to um, the floor now the Minister of Transport and uh, Communications, uh, Marius Quadis, and uh, uh, welcome, dear ministers, congratulations, and uh, uh, the floor is yours. So thank you very much, Mr. Venon. So all, all colleagues, all friends, all friends of this community, which finds really important, uh, which has a which is united by a very important aim to decrease the number of road deaths. And it's really a great pleasure for me to be here. I am happy that I managed to connect at the moment. Regrettably, I am neither in Vilnius nor in Europe. I am in the southern part of Kazakhstan. It's raining outside and I have this opportunity to be with you. So thank you very much for this award. This is a really important award for us because it's a recognition of our efforts, of efforts of numerous big number of people who spent and dedicated their time to reduce the numbers. This is probably the most important thing. Of course, our main goal, the goal of this community is to decrease the number of road deaths and, and, and serious accidents to zero. But at the same time, we have medium term goals and we would like to decrease the number of, of deaths in this decade by another 50%, by at least I would say 50%, since the numbers, we find the numbers being too high. And of course, over the past, if you look at the past decade, it has only been possible because of joint efforts of both public institutions and society. Because you know from your experience, we all know from our experience, you may have rules, but if they not respect it by the public, we won't have any effect. And that's probably the most important thing. We need to have to join our effort to reach those most important, important goals. 
And since you mentioned, Ms. Davinosa, in your, in your presentation, the recommendation to implement safe system in our world, I would say that this is our philosophy. This is our philosophy, what we are trying to achieve. Because on the one hand, because on the one hand, uh, we all know that people tend to make mistakes. And we will make this mistakes uh, even if you take the most rational individual. But on the other hand, we all need to aim that our travels won't be affected by injuries and how the system is designed. So the aim is to design roads and the system in such a way that mistakes made by individuals won't lead to accidents and especially fatal accidents. And this is, this is our approach. So to conclude, I would like to thank you once again for this award, which is really very important for Lithuania and for all institutions, for people and for society. Thank you very much for that. And now I would like to pass the floor to my colleague, Deputy Deputy Minister, who is in Lithuania, who won't have any issues with connectivity, I very much hope, and will give a brief overview of what we did and what we are planning, planning to achieve in this respect. So thank you very much. So it's not only a pleasure uh, to speak because I'm in Vilnius, but because of the topic itself. It's an honor to represent uh, Lithuanian results uh, in this sense. And um, so, dear colleagues, experts from the road safety community, uh, I could not um, uh, refer even more than the minister just uh, highlighted. We are very much excited to, to get this award, and uh, we do believe that it's a uh, commitment for us to do even more. And uh, let me share uh, some, some uh, words about Lithuania in more details, what we have done so far. So as we know, the EU countries are united in their aim to ensure that no one is killed or seriously injured in the road accidents. Measures to achieve this goal are also included in Lithuania's national programs. Our strategic goal is to reduce by 50%, what uh, just our minister mentioned, by 2030. And uh, in the period of, uh, as you can see in the slide, in the period of uh, 2011 and 2021, the number of road deaths fell by 51%. And uh, taking into account the strategic goals uh, jointly by the EU, Lithuania has already exceeded the set of goal, uh, although the number of fatal accidents is still too high. Such a result has been achieved thanks to the combined efforts of both public authorities and society. For example, Lithuania carries out road traffic safety research on a regular basis. A lot of effort has been made to improve unsafe road infrastructure and implement traffic safety measures on roads and streets. The Lithuanian police carries out a, a active control of roads users and we constantly update legislation related to, uh, to traffic safety. And if we would like to change our future, first we must understand very well our existing situations and our past. From my opinion, the numbers of fatalities may have been less if drivers were more accurate, more careful on the roads, not speeding. As we know very well, road crashes causes near 98% of all transport deaths. Uh, we have a long way to go to catch up uh, the highest safety levels of railways and aviation industry. And now we need to improve road safety in the roads. Up to 2020, we implemented more than 1,000 road safety measures uh, per year. Reconstructing then safe pedestrian crossings, new roundabouts, engineering upgrading of dangerous junctions, infrastructure for uh, vulnerable roads users, improvement of lighting conditions, safety islands, traffic calming, speed bumps, additional road safety measures, improving safety of road signs. One of the actual road safety problem in Lithuania is drunk driving. So I would like to share our success story on this topic. Lithuania has chosen two solutions to reduce the number of drunk drivers. First, stricter responsibility for, driving, uh, for drink driving. And secondly, stronger control of driver sobriety. 
a lot of attention has also been paid to educational activities, which uh, has also um, undoubtedly contributed to reducing the number of drunk drivers. In 2019, the Lithuanian parliament adopted an amendment to the law on road traffic safety, allowing the Minister of Transport and Communications to launch an alcohol interlock program as a pathway to a shorter driving ban for high-level drink driving offenders. Since 2020, convicted drink drivers who have lost their driving license are, after a set uh, period of time, able to apply for their license to be reinstated with the provision that they only drive a vehicle fitted with an alcohol interlocker. We're living in and must plan for a changing world. Population trends, settlement patterns, development of industry and trade have always been important preconditions for the design of the transport system. The transport safety targets are part of the transport policy objectives structure. They are expressed as specifications of the transport policy important objectives, one for each mode of transport. High quality infrastructure and efficient and safe transport solutions are important for the na nation's competitiveness. Our national vision zero plan meets the challenges and the necessary restru uh, restructuring the country in the better way. Steps to vision zero are in 2030 by our plans, 50% fatalities and serious injuries reduction, and in 2050, zero fatalities. Vision zero priorities are safer behavior of road users, safer roads infrastructure, safer and greener vehicles, effective post-accident assistance, detailed investigation of all traffic accidents. For speeding prevention, average speed cameras introduced in 81 road sections since, since 2018. In Lithuanian roads, also 400 fixed speed cameras were installed. I can say speed cameras really helps to reduce speeding consequences and uh, save lives. Black spots treatment in Lithuanian roads per 10 years really uh, helps to prevent serious accidents in the dangerous road sections. Deploying of road safety measures help to reduce number of black spots by 90%. The key principle guiding our efforts is to create a safe environment for all road users, uh, so-called safe system on our roads. The idea is simply yet fundamental. It's an approach to road safety management based on the principle that our lives and health should not be compromised by our need to travel. This means that we cannot accept any level of death or injury on our roads. The safe system is designed with the human being at its center, taking human fallibility and vulnerability into account and accepting that even the most uh, conscientious person will make a mistake at some point. The goal of the safe system is to ensure that these mistakes do not lead to a crash, if a crash does occur, it is sufficiently controlled to avoid death or life-changing injury. Responsibility for the system should be shared by everyone, policymakers, planners, engineers, vehicle manufacturers, fleet managers, enforcement officers, road safety educators, health agencies, and the media are responsible for the system safety. While every road user, whether they drive, cycle, or walk, is responsible for complying with the system's rule. National Vision Zero Plan also involves sustainable urban mobility plans. It gives to Lithuania possibility to test new ideas. Attention will be paid to the rapid development in technology. The right decisions to be made investments in the transport system are to be carried out. I would like to say special thankful words to Antonio Avenoso. CEO of the ETCS for the excellent and successful partnership with Lithuania. For example, ETCS Road Safety Exchange Project is helping Lithuania to find the best and the most effective measures to improving the safety of vulnerability road users. I have no doubt that the results of this project will contribute to Lithuanians' progress in improving traffic safety, in the development of cycling infrastructure, and in the collection of accidents database. As cycling has a huge influence on economy, environment, health, and safety, Lithuania is now starting to give uh, particular attention to this topic. 
As a result of our participation in road safety exchange project, especially as regards cycling safety, we have expanded our activity in this area. The main change is that we have started a wide scale cycling promotion project in Lithuania. So once again, thank you very much for all the uh, parties and uh, for the program itself. We are very much grateful and we will improve. Thank you. Thank you very much to the uh, Deputy Minister and to the Minister. I'm delighted now to uh, hand you the award on behalf of the uh, steering committee. So it goes to you. Okay, we've managed. That was uh, efficient. Thank you very much. And uh, um, congratulations again uh, to you, dear Deputy Minister, to the Minister. And uh, um, we look forward to um, continuing the cooperation in the framework of the PIN and uh, in the framework of all the other um, ETC projects. Thank you. And also, can I just say one word? Uh, Please. Since the Minister is not here, I will keep this award um, on my shelf. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see if he agrees. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, we now move on and uh, uh, we are um, delighted to welcome uh, um, Claire Depre, head of the Road Safety Unit at the European Commission. Um, Claire has kindly accepted also to take questions. I do encourage you to send the questions not through the chat function, but through the Q&A uh, function of uh, um, the Zoom uh, um, program. Claire, over to you. Many thanks, Antonio. I'm, I'm extremely delighted to be uh, with all of you uh, today. Uh, usually, I, I really enjoy ETS events for many different reasons. I, uh, often, we, we have the chance to uh, exchange views, learn, uh, certainly, but, um, but also get a little bit under pressure, uh, under constructive pressure, I would say, which is uh, certainly what uh, ETSC rule is also about, huh? towards the Commission, towards the Member States, towards anyone actually who is uh, slightly involved or, or very uh, deeply involved in, in road safety. So thanks you for, for that too. I'll start by congratulating, of course, uh, Lithuanian, uh, the Lithuanian Minister, the Deputy uh, Ministers. The, the, the progress achieved is, is certainly uh, amazing. It is amazing. Uh, I, I will, I would also say because um, I think you have been able to uh, to bring all the energy from the political level into this uh, extremely important um, objective, uh, but also because you you have been able to take uh, the full advantage of uh, the safe system approach and and implement it uh, quickly and and fastly. So. The, the results are, are really, really good. Huh? If we compare, you know, the, the trends over the, 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 last, uh, the last year, but certainly also the progress done um, this year with a 70% reduction or 22% reduction if we compare to the level uh, pre-COVID. Of course, as Antonio was uh, mentioning, there's still room for maneuver. Huh? If we look also at the uh, uh, European average, um, but um, but certainly the, the, the pace with which the uh, the efforts have been made and the results achieved is certainly faster than than the EU average. But now, if we extract a little bit ourselves from from Lithuania and we uh, go back to the European level, I think that what I want to to flag um, is that we, we should we should not be too happy, too happy in the sense that of course if. Um, if we uh, if we look back at the, the years where where we could uh, enjoy a little bit the benefit from from COVID, we are certainly not in that trend anymore. Um, uh, this year, we, we we have noted an increase of five percent in uh, the number of uh, fatal fatalities compared to last year. And so, uh, if we if we don't take you know uh, uh, good measures and we are realistic also about the the, the existing situation. We, we will certainly not be on track with, with the targets. And here, Antonio, allow me to say that. Um, usually when we talk about these targets, we often mention EU targets. So if I go back to the Valletta Declaration, um, I think the Valletta Declaration was a declaration from member states taking the commitment, each of them, to achieve um, a reduction of 50% by 2030 
uh, both fatalities and serious injuries, and 2050 achieving um, as close as possible to Vision Zero. So, although they are often called EU targets, these targets are applicable to all member states because they all co-sign uh, the declaration, this, uh, this Valletta declaration. So overall for me, what, what I take out of this discussion is that we need to do more, we did need to do more, and we certainly need to do that much quicker. And that's actually also most probably part of the, um, the recipe uh, that allow our colleagues in, uh, in Lithuania to, uh, to be uh, uh, as efficient, both I would say administrative level, but certainly also at the level of the administration and the colleagues we are closely um, working on. So you had kindly invited initially uh, Matthew Baldwin uh, to do a keynote speech. Of course, it's a little bit complicated for me to, uh, to step in. Uh, you, I think all, all of us know um, how much um, how much it is rare to find to find people as committed uh, uh, as Matthew uh, is in everything is is uh, is uh, working on and certainly on road safety too. So it's hard to come closer uh, to him. Uh, but what I can mention is that his uh, strong commitment and his vision is uh, the efforts, uh, the energy, and the stamina that is uh, has been put on road safety will will continue with. Uh, um, uh, also, my uh, my director, Christian Schmidt, who is taking over the role of road safety uh, coordinator, and of course, you will be able to count all of all the road safety community on the energy of the road safety unit and uh, other colleagues in in the commission to um, to achieving uh, our goal. So. Now, getting a little bit back to, um, to how we usually present uh, the, the, the action, the support, the measures that we are taking also at European level, we often start with subsidiarity. We often start with shared competencies. And I think that if I want to translate that in our own field, and especially in the field of road safety, for me, this shared competence means complementarity. The shared competence means um, supporting each other in the measures we uh, we we are taking and so the um, the period that uh, we 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 are working on is quite uh, it's quite a dense one um, on the one hand and maybe i will start with the uh, with the exchange program um so you know often we start with with legislation when we talk about uh, uh, the eu action but i want to really flag how important this exchange program in the field of road safety has been effective uh, we heard the message also from our colleagues from from uh, from the union from the deputy uh, ministers how much this exchange program was useful to uh, to accelerate uh, the, the pace of the change, the pace of the um, initiative and measures also at uh, Lithuanian uh, level. So I really see that um, with a little bit of, uh, of budget allocated to that project, which is not an immense one, we, we were all together able to take a lot uh, back in terms of effectiveness and certainly ETSC has been playing a very strong role in that respect. We will soon uh, publish a new call and uh, the, the European Parliament has kindly provided additional budget for, for a second round, a second uh, edition of this road safety exchange program. I can only but invite everyone, uh, every member states to, uh, to be part of in, in such project so that we can further expand the topics we are discussing, we can be uh, even more effective, we can accelerate, as I said, the the introduction of uh, of new measure, but I said that the the year was quite uh, was quite dense. Huh? This this year is quite dense for us, and despite the fact that I'm sometimes a little bit frustrated about the the slow pace huh, with uh, which we we can come and announce new measures, new uh, funding, new uh, um, uh, soft measures we we might uh, we we might wish to uh, to provide to the road safety community. Believe me, there's a little there's a lot of work going on at this moment in time. The first one, uh, the first area we'd like to uh, to discuss is the driving license directive. Here we are planning for a revision of such a directive. The uh, impact assessment is is already quite uh, advanced, I would say. So many thanks to all those who have contributed to. Uh, well, enlightening us also in terms of uh, the priority for the revision, also the, um, the drawbacks of certain uh, points and certain areas. 
we we want to make use of this revision to um, to uh, be certainly more effective, especially when it comes to uh, certain category of road users or maybe targeting also certain um, uh, category of, of age. Huh? So in that sense, I would say that um, the message that we also have received a lot from, from member states is that we can do more when it comes to training, we can do more when it comes to risk awareness, we can do more when it comes to taking advantage of uh, new technologies coming up inside the vehicles or why not also on the infrastructure side. We, we are looking also into um, driver disqualification. Uh, we are looking in that respect to, uh, to, to try to understand how actually drivers who are really uh, having very, uh, very, very bad behavior could, uh, could, uh, um, not, could not be in a position in which they could go into all countries without um, uh, actually in a, um, without member states not knowing about um, uh, the, the offenses uh, being uh, uh, performed by, by the road users. So I think that this is an area where uh, we can also discuss, we will continue the discussion indeed with, uh, with member states, we are meeting them ends of the month to continue our reflection, our analysis. Of course, we have not finalized the proposal, so this is all preparatory work, all discussion ongoing and all analysis um, uh, ongoing. On the other side, we are also working on the revision of the cross-border enforcement directive, so still very much in the behavioural aspect, uh, to take the words of the deputy um, uh, ministers of Lithuania. Um, here, what I wanted to flag is that um, we, we have taken note of the input provided uh, by the road safety community, by the fact that we should um, try to use the instrument available through this legal framework to cover additional road safety offenses, uh, to make sure that actually this, this means, this tool is um, uh, as supportive as to the target as we uh, as we we have in terms of road safety another element we are we will be touching is certainly the governance around uh, the directive itself so the very first objective of this directive was to increase cooperation between member states when it comes to um, to detection investigation and uh, enforcement of uh, road safety uh, offenses um, I think that the current directive has already produced good results, but certainly can uh, produce even more results. And so mutual assistance between uh, enforcement authorities is certainly an area where uh, we would like to uh, dig more uh, into. So um, there we are really finalizing now these days um, the uh, uh, impact assessment to be discussed internally uh, with um, uh, with uh, with the hierarchy, um, and so uh, very soon we will start preparing for uh, the measure itself. Um, I want to spend few uh, few minutes on on infrastructure, also to follow up on uh, the comments made by our uh, Lithuanian um, by the Lithuanian deputy ministers. So this is also an area where improvement can be um, uh, can be uh, can can be done. Um, there are two streams of activities we have tried to, uh, to, um, to develop uh, at, at EU level. The first one in relation to the, the reason directive. So this is a directive where we look at safety of uh, road infrastructure um, from the management, uh, so from the procedural aspect. We, have, um, we are developing with, a, with member states uh, a methodology to assess the road safety, the road network. So there are pilot projects ongoing at this moment in time to test the methodology. The aim, the ultimate aim is to make sure that actually we can support um, better informed decision when it comes to investment uh, to be done uh, on, on the road network. So I really thank you, thankful for, for all member states for the active participation in that respect. I really hope that we can take the best out of this pilot project that we can then issue the methodology that this can be a useful tool for you to uh, integrate that into um, your, your policy making and certainly in, on your investment uh, plans. Um, 
urban level was mentioned several times. We also need to take that, uh, to take uh, into account the change in the situation and different traffic flows, different traffic modes and traffic uh, mean um, and road uh, means. Um, so certainly um, a, a, an attention to be paid uh, on vulnerable road users. Um, so, so there too, um, that there's a stream of activities that will have to be uh, done also at some stage where we can look at how uh, best practices in member states when it comes to um, uh, infrastructure related to vulnerable road users can, can, uh, can, uh, can play the whole role uh, it should have. Um, in, in from the vehicle side, uh, just a few words on the vehicle side, of course, here we will soon be coming into um, uh, the time where vehicle, uh, I think it's next month that uh, the, the new provision uh, in law apply um, to vehicle when it comes to new vehicles, when it comes to um, uh, all the, the advanced driving assistance system that have been uh, regulated through the general safety regulation. So I know that this ETSC has been extremely active in trying to make the best out of this EDA system for the purpose of road safety. So we will move on into a, a, a wider implementation a year by year, um, certainly also after 2024. I hope that all together we can take stock of the progress, see where there are shortcomings and how to address them. From the vehicle side too, we in DigiMove, we also prepare a revision of the roadworthiness uh, package. Here, the objective is really to address, um, well, to make sure that the procedure around the testing of the vehicle are a little bit more suited, uh, suitable to the needs of the new vehicles. Um, this brings a lot of new, um, of a new um, uh, topics and, and aspects to be, uh, to be analyzed, to be digested. Um, I would say that in that area, what I think it's also important to uh, acknowledge, and, and I think I will really take this into account in the development of our own policy making, is the affordability of it. It's easy for all of us to bring yet an additional uh, layer of control, um, but when we do that, we should really take into account the fact that, you know, the cost also for the end user should be reasonable. Otherwise, what will happen is uh, also giving the economical situation we have in front of us, less vehicle being repaired, less vehicle being uh, uh, maintained, and, and certainly um, uh, periodical testing uh, inspection with, uh, with um, not good uh, outcome and not good results. Um, Antonio, you mentioned in the slides the fact that we should fast-track KPIs. Oh, I love this, uh, this, um, this uh, motto. Uh, certainly uh, something that we, we are taking very seriously. Um, it's very close to our heart. We will also there publish a new, uh, a new call um, where we intend to uh, allow member states or enable member states to work speedily on key performance indicators. Um, we have already done a lot in the past, and I think that colleagues in the member states have put a lot of energy when it comes to eight KPIs we had identified in our um, road safety uh, action plan. Here, the idea is to take stock, uh, being able to build and to simplify as much as possible the, the process, the, make the data collection as, uh, as easy as possible, but also try to look into new areas and new avenues. And in this respect, I think I have already mentioned in, in previous occasion, we really want to see um, uh, a new uh, key performance indicators when it comes to enforcement. Uh, so at this stage, these are really the big, big building blocks of what we are doing. But believe me, there's also a lot more to come. You will have Sarah in the panel related to urban, so she will be able to give you even more detail and certainly invite you to the conference, the road safety conference that we will held in October. So I leave her to explain all this into the detail. Many thanks, Antonio. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claire. That's uh, um, really appreciated. The great analysis of, uh, of the situation and of what the um, European Commission uh, is doing or is planning to do in uh, uh, the um, various areas uh, of road safety. Um, we do have uh, uh, at least two questions, uh, if you don't mind, um, which I've taken. Uh, the first one, um, well, 
yeah, it asks what um, Lithuania has just been awarded the, the PIN award, and uh, uh, what can we learn from uh, um, Lithuania's story for the other countries as well? So, um, what would be the main lesson from uh, uh, winning the award? I think I can say it in one word bravery. Um, it takes a lot of courage, I think, in the road safety to, uh, to, to take measure, sometimes to take difficult measure. And, um, and I think the way Lithuania has, uh, has been able to achieve so, so much result in a short, such a short period of time means that there was commitment from the high, high level, uh, political level. It means that there was bravery from that level. It also means that actually there was a lot of uh, commitment and engagement in many different directions. Be open to solution being developed elsewhere, being able to see whether they make sense or not, engage with the population. I think the minister also refer um, often to, uh, uh, to the society at large. I think it's all but about ownership on, uh, on the need for action. And I think on that respect, we have also a lot to learn from Lithuania. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claire. And uh, um, certainly, they, they, yeah, that's a good example of uh, uh, being persistent, determined, of really wanting to work on road safety from the highest political level. And uh, uh, this is something that helps. And uh, uh, just to give an example, I mean, when we had the, the, the deputy minister um, mentioned the, um, the road safety exchange, and uh, um, when uh, we were in the Netherlands to uh, do one of the study visits, well, she was there personally together with her technical persons, which shows actually that we support willingness to work from uh, uh, the top level. And this was uh, um, certainly very important. Uh, uh, now, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my phone, not for other reasons, because I received some questions from uh, the um, colleagues who are uh, checking them for me. And one says, uh, uh, referring basically to the point I've made in the presentation about the agency, uh, are there any plans to set up an agency uh, which could, amongst other things, investigate collision involving assisted driving technologies and automated vehicles? Good question. So I said I would be grilled. Uh, so here I'm, I'm, I might have a little bit of good news, actually. Uh, so you, you know that uh, uh, you know that often we don't make any announcement until the decision is being taken, and so I don't have any big announcement to be to be done. But I have still good news. The good news is that we have been actually working a lot um, with colleagues from different DGs um, recently to try to. Um, well, kickstart a bit of a process also with uh, our stakeholders. Huh? Here again, I had mentioned several times that, you know, when, whenever I'm going, I'm asking, do you, in our sustainable and smart mobility strategy, we mention the possibility of our reflection on going. What is that you actually, how did you interpret, uh, uh, colleagues, this, this statement? What is actually your own expectation? And so, as much as we have built, I think, a little bit of our analysis of the need for, uh, for, such a, uh, for such a body, and we would need, of course, to confirm uh, if our preliminary assessment is, is the right one, I think it is important also um, that stakeholders at large, member states, authorities, uh, European Parliament and uh, industry alike, for example, um, would, uh, would start considering a little bit what could be the advantage, the drawback, the benefit, the constraint um, around um, such, a, such an initiative. So what are we doing at this moment in time? We, uh, we should be able to publish, uh, I hope until the end of this month, uh, uh, a call for tender with the aim to launch a feasibility study. Uh, this will be uh, there to refine, our, as I said, our preliminary uh, uh, assessment uh, regarding um, the need, the opportunity of um, such, a, such a body, such, a, such an agency, but also be able to interact with our st stakeholders in a much more structured manner and not just dropping, you know, uh, either from myself a question to the audience or get a question from um, the, uh, the organizer or the public in, in, any, in any event. I think that as you have mentioned, Antonio, the, the initial consideration we have is um, we have in front of us a lot of um, complex issues to, to deal. 
uh, and they might be complex because of introduction of technology. They might be complex because they might affect how we handle road safety today. They might be complex because through the introduction of um, uh, through the transformation that our road transport sector is facing right now, um, we we probably need to have a, a bit more of a structure um, uh, reaction or even more than the reaction, the discussion ahead to, to be able to handle properly the task that each authorities um, might need to take. Now, it's not an easy discussion, of course, huh, what I mentioned. It's easy to set, maybe um, uh, to identify the problem. It's another thing to come to the solution knowing that this also has a cost. Um, this, uh, this also will take a bit of time. And so all together, I think that we just need to understand that this issue needs to be processed and a strong invite also to the authorities in the member states to reflect um, about this. Uh, it took us also internally within the Commission a bit of time to understand how we want to work and why we need to work a lot more through the different Commission departments to enable, to accelerate, to accompany the transformation of the road transport sector. And so I think we came all to the conclusion that alone, as different commission departments, but also just as the commission with the resources that we have here, we won't be able to accompany it at best. That's me talking, huh? um, me reporting, but certainly not yet a commission position. So take the months ahead of us and the interaction we want to generate with us as a way to provide input in a positive negative manner in a very open and constructive dialogue. Thank you, Claire. You almost running out of voice. I really appreciate that. Uh, but I, uh, I have another question from uh, uh, our friends in the UK that just arrived. Um, in May 2021, Spain set a national urban speed limit of 30K. From September 2023, Wales will have a national urban speed limit of 20 miles per hour is becoming a de facto standard elsewhere. What opportunity is there to promote the setting of 30K as an urban norm across Europe as per the Stockholm Declaration and the UN call in the decade of action? So, Antonia, I would, I would start by referring to, uh, to the communication that the Commission has adopted recently when it comes to repower EU. Huh? Um, also to mention that I think that what we are not sufficiently using in the road safety uh, community is the opportunities, the um, areas where our colleagues from other departments uh, or the support that colleagues from other departments could, could give to us. Right? So we all know that reducing speeds, and when I was talking about bravery, it, it, it's not an easy decision to take. Huh? You, you, you don't get necessarily everyone to accept um, uh, such a uh, such, a, such a solution. Here in, in, in Brussels, for example, we, we, we have had a lot of discussion with the population. I, I know that the, the transport minister from, from Brussels had to engage a lot uh, to uh, enable such a measure to, to start being accepted. So, so when referring back to, uh, to this communication, I think that the Commission also taking, a, to, uh, taking advantage of the uh, energy crisis has already made a number of recommendations when it comes to speed. We probably have to look at lower speed where needed. And where needed, uh, I would say, you, know, you can see the language that we have in such a communication. It looks at urban, but not only actually. It looks at the whole network. So we see savings when it comes to uh, energy reduction. We certainly, from the road safety community, see a lot of benefit when it comes to reduction of fatalities and serious injuries. So the Commission stand by it. The Commission has also uh, support, um, you know, the, the global uh, action plan and, and, and the campaign um, uh, regarding um, lower speed uh, on, for, for, for streets. Um, now, whether this needs a specific additional instrument to repeat it or not, that is not for me really to decide. But believe me, through all the channel all the levers that we are using, speed is very much at the core of the EU policy. We see it in the cross-border enforcement directive. We might see it when it comes to the driving license, uh, the revision of the driving license directive. We see it in uh, the exchange program and the place that the discussion have 
um, have taken uh, in relation to uh, to lower speed. So don't think that we are not there. We are just trying to empower those who are in the position to take uh, such a decision. Thank you very much, Claire. We, we usually say that speed for us is uh, uh, obviously extremely important, that we love speed, but when it comes to speed of action in taking road safety measures, that's the only area in which we like it. We um, have uh, um, certainly enjoyed your presentation, your availability to answer questions. We thank you very, very much. And uh, I'm sure that all the participants of the conference will uh, um, join me in uh, um, giving you a big round of applause for uh, um, your intervention in uh, today's uh, PIN uh, um, uh, conference. Um, we are slightly ahead of schedule, which means that uh, uh, the coffee break will be um, longer. Uh, we uh, now stop and uh, we will resume at 11.30 with uh, um, a great panel on uh, urban road safety. It will be chaired by a man who needs no introduction, Klaus Mahata, and uh, uh, we will hear from the city of Bilbao, from the Dutch cycling embassy, from uh, the European Parliament, the European Commission, and uh, uh, ETSC, uh, who will all be on uh, this panel. I also need to inform you that from a practical point of view, uh, we are going to stop the event right now, so you will be disconnected, but uh, please remember on the same link to reconnect at 11 30 when we will uh, uh, start promptly the uh, uh, panel debate. Thank you very much. See you exactly in half an hour.